Okay, lunch is over. Now back to work. Hi, you, Mr. Flintstone. Greetings, Rocky, my boy. Pack of Winston's, please. Oh, you like them Winston cigarettes, huh, Mr. Flintstone? Mm, but, of course, they really got something. You bet your life. Folks who really enjoy smoking know it's what's up front that counts. And that's where Winston steps out ahead of the crowd with their exclusive filter blend. Choice Golden Tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoke. Hold it, hold it. Yeah, what you mean? What are you pitching Winston's at me for? You know I never smoke nothing else. Just practicing, Mr. Flintstone. Everybody knows that... Winston tastes good, like a cigarette should. Yeah. See you soon, Rocky. Yes, once again, I probably screwed up that opening. Uh, I have a feeling I had too many monitors open, too many browsers, and I forgot to mute something, so if there was double audio, I'll fix it in post-production, but welcome, everybody. Oh, uh, glad you could join us for another episode of Vape Distortion. Today, we're going to be covering a little bit about all the myths and misconceptions and misinformation and miss this, miss that about youth, uh, youth marketing, and the supposed gateway towards smoking and so forth. Um, there's actually enough to cover where we could spend a couple days on it, so I promise I'll try and keep this much, much shorter video. Some of you had mentioned that. Yeah, it's been pretty long, but live, I kind of like to do them as uh, long as I can. But the big thing with all legislation, if you look at anything being proposed, whether it's local, whether it's the FDA, whether it's in Canada, BC, Ontario, even all the media, everything is pushing for, we have to protect the youth from these dangerous products. They're toxic. They're going to kill our kids. They're poison. We have to protect the youth. And what people have to understand is the, we must protect the youth is actually a very old technique used for many years whenever anything needs to be passed and you need support. If you go to the public and say that, oh, uh, this brand new product that just came out, it's really dangerous for your kids, so you don't want it near them. Naturally, you're going to be thinking, oh, well, if I care about my kids, I've got to stay away from that and I'll warn others. And that's how the message is basically propagated. So they can redirect the message any way that they want. For instance, with the vaping, it's always, well, we have to protect the kids from these products because if the kids get a hold of it, it'll poison them, it'll kill them, they'll get into smoking. First of all, the poison control, we're actually going to cover that one day. Um, I'm going to go through the actual logs from poison control because if you notice, a lot of them always said that, well, if a kid gets a hold of it, the nicotine will kill them. Well, yeah raw nicotine will kill if they take it the even the liquid nicotine right from the high high concentration um, liquid that's added like diluted then added to the e-juices yeah that can definitely harm or even kill somebody it's full strength nicotine the nicotine that goes into the e-juice is heavily diluted and it's not even the same formulation anyhow we'll get into that um, not today but in a future episode I'm actually going to go through those call logs because where they say the one teaspoon will kill uh, your kid and all these calls have flooded into poison control. A couple of quick things they didn't tell you about that. If you notice, they always stop at either February or April of 2015 as, oh, here's all our data collected. That's because the graph basically went like this as, well, <laughs> sorry. I gotta get used to the backward screen. 
but the graphs went like this as vape products came onto the market and after april 2015 the graphs went boom for poison control calls they kind of leave that point out in the media coverage when they say oh yeah there's a huge epidemic of calls coming in they leave out the fact that actually there aren't and when you actually read the logs they aren't even calls about poisonings <laughs> so again i bring that up strictly because this is one of the key things that they say we must protect the youths from the nicotine next thing is the nicotine addiction so yes um we're gonna have our kids are going to be vaping. They're going to be getting all this nicotine into their system. And the whole purpose is to get them addicted so that they'll get more and more of the e-juice. And then they'll switch over to smoking because then the cigarettes can really, really addict them. And it's complete, utter bullshit and illogical. <laughs> and we'll cover some of the reasons. But you have to understand... A lot of the politicians that put this forward, some, yes, they've been giving their marching orders to press forward with certain platforms like the youth, smoking, vaping, all the same. Get rid of vaping, get rid of smoking, protect the youth. So they've been giving the, them their marching orders. But a lot of the others, a lot of the other politicians are really do have good intentions. They're just going on the information or rather the misinformation that they're being fed so they think they actually are helping and that the real risk for and reason for all these regulations legislation is to protect the youth protect our kids and therefore their constituents naturally think yes if you aren't protecting them if you're opposed to any of these legislations you must be against our kids and you want to harm our kids so it's only natural for them to put forward that, okay, if they're saying it's to protect the kids, there must be a reason. What they forget is that the kids are used in a lot of legislation when you have to gain popularity or people accepting your side of the argument. If you use kids as a, as a cause, people will automatically, oh, it must be true, must be real, therefore we'll support it. And that's basically what they've been doing with the legislation. So a lot of these politicians, it's not really that they are not they are against the vaping. It's just they're believing the misinformation they've been fed. Basically, they've been duped. And it's very hard for a political party to kind of backtrack and say, okay, yes, we looked further into this. And we realize what you've been telling us isn't exactly the whole story. And so that's one of the reasons why they go against the youth marketing. Then the whole thing of an e-cigarette will cause the addiction. The whole point of this is to get people addicted, get the kids addicted. Um, there's a huge epidemic of vaping with teens. Yes. Uh, those in the those who vape basically understand that yeah a lot of it is bs now not all of it is and that's the thing yes teens kids are vaping what's being misinformed to the public is that the ants which are the anti-nicotine uh, zealots uh, anti-nicotine and tobacco zealots and a lot of the legislation that's being put forward it's being presented as, well, yes, there's an epidemic of kids vaping. And the reason they can use epidemic is, t if you take a close look at their actual figures, um, yes, there are a lot of teens vaping, but it's not the vape industry who is target marketing them. Kids, and I've covered this multiple times in other shows, but kids are going to experiment. There's nothing we can do to stop that. Unless you get rid of a product, but then you may as well get rid of cars entirely because kids will joyride. You may as well get rid of every pharmaceutical product because kids will try the drugs. You may as well get rid of everything. Kids will experiment. Whether they get it from their parents, whether they get it from their friends, whether they 
find somebody who's selling it on the street or whatever. And yes, there are probably some unethical shops that will sell to youth. The vape industry does not does not condone it. Vape industry does not want kids or youth involved whatsoever. The target market is smokers, not kids. We don't need more <laughs> more people smoking so that they can switch to vaping. There are plenty of smokers that go around. And as they die off, fine. This is a smaller market. It's not like the vape industry is looking to regenerate the market. They'll have their like they'll have their base vapors. Those of us who used to be smokers who've switched over to vaping, we're gonna we're gonna be around a lot longer now that we've quit smoking. And yeah, myself, I'm getting on in age. I might not be around much longer. I might be here five years, ten years, twenty years, thirty years. Who knows? I don't plan on living to a hundred. But that's a long time for the industry to grow, expand, and find its proper place in the market. But the main purpose right now is targeting smokers to get them off smoking. The tobacco industry, unfortunately, as with whether well, it was the Flintstones, I mean, hell, the Flintstones didn't just do tobacco, they also did beer commercials. And so a cartoon back then, that's why so often it's being used. The vape industry is doing the exact same thing as the tobacco industry. They're saying, oh, we aren't marketing to kids, yet they're putting on all these colorful uh, pictures as their labels. They're doing all these fancy flavors and it's all to attract the kids and Check my previous episode on the importance of flavors and you'll find out why there are flavors. And yes, there are going to be candies. Uh, there is my standard, <laughs> almost every single episode, my candy cane. I've got my banana cream pie. Actually, sorry, that was, <laughs> that's my vanilla ice cream. There's my banana cream pie. And... So yes, adults use flavors, and that's how we stay off of going back from smoking. Yet, in legislation, the politicians, the ants, the media will push that the only possible reason for flavors is because the kids will like it. And somehow, magically, once you hit age 18, you no longer enjoy candy you don't like desserts, you don't like fruits, you don't like pop or soda or anything that kids like, you just magically lose all your taste buds and you don't like food. Guess what? That's not how it happens. Smokers regain a lot of our taste buds once we stop smoking and switch to vaping. We become almost foodies because we're discovering flavors that we had lost a long time ago because of the smoking. That's why there's so many flavors. Watch the previous episode. It'll explain it further. But that's the big argument for kids. If you give them a flavor, then that must be target marketing kids. Because why else would you do an ice cream? Why else would you do a cotton candy? Why else would you do a cereal taste? It has to be for kids. Wrong. Adults like candy. Adults like one of my favorites, and unfortunately I'm pre-diabetic now so I can't have many more, but I can still get it in my vape, is Fruit Loops. I <laughs> I didn't even bother with the milk. As I've said in other broadcasts, I don't even bother with milk. I loved my Fruit Loops. Uh, at one point it was the Captain Crunch and so forth, but I adored my Fruit Loops. I'm an adult. I'm allowed to. If you notice when you go to a convenience store or gas station, look where the candy bars are. Does it say no adults are allowed? No. Look who's buying most of the candy. Adults are grabbing candy. We like our candy. We like our soda pop. We don't really always eat healthy, but we like them. So it's not a case of flavors are specifically targeting the youth. That's not the reason for it. Do some of the kids who have taken up vaping wherever they got it from like the flavors yeah 
is that our fault? No, we can't help it if the parents and everyone else isn't educating them. They, eh, I can't emphasize it enough. The vape industry doesn't want the kids because, number one, it makes us look bad. We, we have nothing to do with it, yet it comes back on us as you're trying to target it. And I can understand that point. The tobacco companies actually put out document after document, and you can even see them online right from the tobacco companies, where they knew that their only marketing chance they had was to keep refreshing and getting new smokers. And where did they get that? They were told, target the kids, get them smoking now, get them addicted, and you'll have a customer for life. And that's what they did. So unfortunately, that mentality, everyone, a lot of the media and general people who aren't vapors think that, yes, this is the same as smoking. They see the plume. To them, that looks like smoke. Smokers supposedly vape or ex-smokers switch to vaping. So it must be really close to the same thing. And therefore, if our teens get it, or if our kids get it, they're doing the same thing. And because the tobacco company lied to people about, oh, we aren't interested in getting smokers, we don't want the kids. Because the tobacco company lied, they automatically assume that, well, since these products look pretty much the same, the vape company has to be lying as well. What they don't understand is vapors are passionate about it you don't find cigarette, cigarette people holding a vengeance going, oh yeah, try try this brand, try this cigarette. Oh, this one really tastes, you love the tobacco in this. You don't find that happening. People get their brands and they'll either bum a smoke or whatever, and, but they don't get enthused about it. The reason smokers get enthused is we know many of us, myself included, grew up where we started smoking as teens. We battled with wanting to stop smoking for years. Myself, I had smoked over 35 years, almost two packs a day, the strongest smokes I could find. I went through the patches, I went through the gums, I went through the two sessions laser therapy, the Chantex, everything. Um, I've covered, covered this before and I'll, I'll end up covering it again. But nothing worked for me. When I started vaping, I just wanted to cut down on the cost. I figured to convince myself every fifth one I can replace a smoke, it'll cut down on costs. Tried it. I it, I was lucky. I haven't had a single cigarette since my very first vape. But it's much the same with most vapors. We're very passionate because we know the difference it has made with our health. And the reason we don't want the kids, we would prefer they didn't vape. We really don't want them smoking either. We know how hard it was on us. We know the damage that was done. And vapors really, in the most emphasized way, more than anything, do not want kids to ever go through what most of us have gone through. We were lucky when vaping came along, Nothing, if nothing else had worked, almost every single vapor is an ex-smoker. Some are still dual users, very small amount, although Stan Glantz uh, seems to think that most people are dual users. Uh, guess what? Most people switch over. Some people are dual users and they've cut down on their tobacco. Uh, as we know, he likes to make up some facts, but we'll get to that down the road. But the main thing is, vapors don't want kids or teens or anyone getting hooked on anything like tobacco, cigarettes, smoking. They don't want them going through the health issues a lot of us have gone through. And that's why the vape industry really has no interest in the kids market. We don't need a renewed or growing market. There are a lot of smokers out there and that's who everyone <laughs> vaping is really trying to reach is like Damn, if you knew what this did for us, and yet we can still enjoy some of the habits the from the 
hand to mouth there. Getting any little sensation coming out. Um, different types of devices we have our variety so it's that sensation it gives us the same sensation as we used to have when we were smokers and that's why it's been effective so I don't know how else to put it vapors aren't interested in kids vaping or smoking now the same time we do know that they are going to experiment there's no way around it nothing we can do i mean short of completely removing the products entirely off the market which is well especially in the states that's what the fda is basically doing they're trying to force it off the market they'll say that oh we aren't doing a ban but when you stop a product from being improved, as a matter of fact, if there's, let's say if there was any sort of defect in a product, do you realize the manufacturer isn't even allowed to fix it? They, there's, you can have, <laughs> there's been bad yogurt out there, which, yeah, you can do a recall, fix, put it back out, the products are not allowed. FDA regulations are very ill thought out. They need them put under tobacco so that they can do the tobacco taxation rates, which I'm going to cover in another episode. Again, a lot of episodes ahead and so forth. But there's reasons why they want to ban. And the easiest way to do that is say it's because the kids are using them. Now, yes, the kids are getting a hold of them. You can find somebody off the street they can get a hold of it they can go to their parents they can get their buddies uncles brothers cousins dog and get it from them a lot of them are basically and i've said this before but doing their little vape tricks where they go make the the all rings and all the little tornadoes they're they like their vape tricks and that's the part they're doing now personally <laughs> it actually looks rather dumb when they do it i can i can understand the appeal i mean basically we we're all fairly young at one point and we did a lot of things that we probably shouldn't have but it doesn't when you it's not till you get older that you realize that damn that was really stupid but they're gonna do that but what the misinformation is doing is saying oh kids well, let's tie it with the nicotine. So products are trying to get them addicted. And that's not what, what's happening. As a matter of fact, where they keep claiming, oh, it's to get them addicted, get them addicted. The studies just show that more than 80% of the teens and youth that have gotten their hands on vapes and vape, whether it's once in a while or with their friends or when they get together or whatever, most aren't even daily users. They're casual users. They do it sort of like when they go to a party. Yeah, the underage, they aren't supposed to drink. You know damn well they're going to drink. They're going to... It's... You experiment as a teen. So anyhow, they say that, oh, well, it's going to get them addicted. More than 80%, it's already been shown, don't even use nicotine. <laughs> it's, it's just the propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, and the food flavoring. Yeah, they like the flavors guess what so do the adults that's why we don't smoke we've gotten into our flavors they use the flavors we would rather they didn't vape at all if they didn't that'd be perfectly fine with us that would actually make us very happy they're gonna if the, if someone will experiment with whatever they'll probably experiment with this or a friend will hand it to them and give them their little hey try this and they'll go oh yeah it's they're gonna experiment there's no way around it but you can't blame an entire industry you can't blame the alcohol industry because kids and teens go drinking you can't shut down the man car manufacturer because kids take a car for a joyride the pharmaceutical companies you can't shut them down because kids experiment with drugs or whatever it's you can't blame an industry an industry can't be responsible for everything that happens 
to someone who's not even supposed to be using it. When legislation and it was with the FDA in the States and most U.S. states themselves, in Canada, each of the individual product, uh, provinces, uh, for instance, B.C. and so forth, when they're passing legislation, they're going, good news, we made it age-restricted. Now those shops can't sell it to minors anymore. Guess what, idiots? The vape industry wanted age restrictions for a long time. Yeah, there are some that are unethical, and they get flamed and bashed heavily in any of the vape forms. You sell to an underage kid even before any of these laws came out. You got ripped to shreds. Your company got bad reviews everywhere. People, well, vapors, told other vapors, hey, don't shop from or buy from these idiots. Uh, one reason, especially here in Canada, a lot of the shops wanted and needed the age restriction was because most had actually been doing age restriction on their own, even though technically and actually legally kids were allowed to buy the products. The vape shops knew that, no, it's not for kids, it's for the smokers, and basically ran their own age restriction, whether they were allowed to or not. They would tell, like, no, you're not 18, not 19, not whatever age it is in your state or province. You can't, but you can't, we won't sell it to you. And the kids leave off in a huff. The problem is, before the regulations came out, there may have been questionable grounds of whether the vape companies could even do that, like the vape shops could do that. So, yeah, the vape industry was in full support of the age restrictions. The reason being is, that's not our market. We don't even want to deal with them. We don't want them in the shops. We aren't there to sell to them. They're there, the shops are there to sell to smokers. And, and most shops are actually owned by previous smokers who switch to vaping and realize, holy crap. I feel a hell of a lot better. I gotta spread this and share it with other smokers, help someone else. And that's actually why vape shops have grown so fast. Some will get in for a quick buck, but most realize the health improvement, and that's why we want to share. So when, it, when the media keeps going on with, well, we have the kids, we have the youth, we have all these kids that they're purposely targeting, bullshit. The politicians are being, they're being <laughs> duped, plain and simple. Yes, red regulations are needed. Yes, legislation is needed. First of all, it shouldn't even be in the tobacco category. It actually did fit in the Consumers Goods and Protection Acts in both Canada and the States. We fit the legal definitions. But the FDA and in Canada Health Canada couldn't classify it under medical because we aren't actually a smoking cessation device. That's not what, it's a side effect that, yeah, vaping creates a hell of a lot of ex-smokers, but that's not what they're purpose for. So they had to get it reclassified into tobacco. Easiest way to do that is say, the kids are, the kids are smoking this. Look at all these toxic fumes they are smoking into their lungs they're blowing clouds and those clouds look like smoke therefore they're smoke and that's how you get sympathy and people on your side is mislead them as to the purpose now like i said the teens are going to vape we would rather they not at the same time i doubt there's any vapor out there if they had to make a single choice between would they rather a teen smoked or would they rather, even if we disagree with it, that they were vaping? The answer will almost guaranteedly be vaping. Not for sales, but because of the health. We know what we've gone through. We know, like myself, I started in my late teens. 
I had smoked for over 35 years. I ran into all kinds of lung and breathing problems, health problems, exhaustion, everything. Um, I went through cancer uh, surgery twice. That's <laughs> that's what that's from. Um, and still, I was smoking. Well, the cancer was there, and it was a case of, like, it wasn't until the vaping that, yeah, this worked for me. And my health improved dramatically. So with the teens, if we have to choose... We'd rather they do n neither. But if it's one or the other, yeah, we don't want anyone going through all the crap and bullshit we did with the tobacco addiction. And yes, I know the FDA and Health Canada and everyone claims that all well, vape products are now tobacco products as well, but that, no. Myself, as I've stated every single time, I started on a fairly high nicotine level, but my personal preference, and I'm... Most people like at least a little bit of nicotine in their uh, vapes, but myself, I like my zero flavor. I like my zero nicotine flavors. So they aren't all ends. I refuse, I, do, I hate the word that the FDA tries to use called ends. Electronic nicotine delivery system. Because guess what? Idiots. I don't use nicotine. There are a lot of vapors who don't use nicotine or the nicotine levels are so low once you have improved systems and you start getting into like the fourth generation device and so on your nicotine level goes way way down so that's also one of the reasons why a lot of the teens and it was shown in the studies that it was over 80 percent of the first batch of studies don't even use nicotine they do it for the tricks and stuff. They When they go to a party or they hang out with their friends because they think it looks fun or whatever or it's the thing to do or parents don't like it, so yeah, let's do it. There are actually some parents who have gotten their kids to vape because they were smokers even from early teens and were already running into issues. The parents switch them over and hopefully they'll get them to cut out entirely. But again, it's... You can't blame an industry for your kids. Now, if it was marketed, for instance, the tobacco, cigarette companies, yeah, they purposely marketed for the kids. The vape industry, we tolerate it at most. We don't like seeing it. We don't like, well, I'll give you an idea. Uh, a couple of weeks ago on YouTube, a number of kids had vaping videos of them vaping. A few posts the forums, the vape forums, and YouTube got slammed with a whole bunch of this needs to be off. Remove it. It the kids shouldn't vape. The kids and posts were being slammed left, right, and center by vapors. It's case like, no, this is not something to just pick up as a hobby just because you think it's cool or whatever. The vapors ripped them apart. And I give YouTube full absolute credit because every, sing every single one was pretty much pulled down. A lot of the accounts were banned for the kids because it's not, well, it's not legal in a lot of countries. And secondly, the vape industry doesn't condone it. They don't want it. It's not an image. We don't want the teens saying that they represent us because they don't yet that's how the media represents it that's how the or sorry how the media presents it um that's how the politicians will represent it when seeking legislation and excuse me sorry about that <clears throat> throat's been a little dry all week so but that's how things are presented that the nicotine is going to get them addicted and they aren't even they aren't a target market for us vapors vape shops are interests in smokers we it's not a cessation device but you can't help but spread word of mouth that yeah this helped me quit maybe it'll help you too it's not going to be for everybody 
but it's been so successful. The patches, gums, and so on, they have a 3 to a 6% success rate. Most vapors have gone through the patches, gums, lozenges, uh, laser therapy, hypnotherapy, whatever. And it didn't work for us. The vaping just happened to work for us. So it's a case of if a smoker comes into a shop, usually it's because, hey, I've heard that maybe it'll work for me. What do you think? The vape shops, professional vape shops, and I'm not talking about the corner gas stations or convenience stores. Uh, they sell e-cigs. These things. Um, that might work for some people, which is great. But most people will go with some sort of starter kits, uh, different levels. And that's what the vape shops do, is they can step the smoker through, try and find what most stimulates what you're currently getting for enjoyment of the cigarette. And the enjoyment is the big part. And that's why people are smoking. It's not just the addiction. It's a case of the hand to mouth. It becomes the habit. You've got, it gives you something to do with your, it it actually does have an enjoyment factor. Um, and that was purposely built in, but that was part of it. So what vaping does is takes out the 4,000 to 7,000 chemicals, reduces it, and gives the flavors. You get to taste buds back and <laughs> vapors basically become foodies. That's why we need our flavors. Anyhow, ugh, it's always the kids' nicotine addiction. And that's why the flavors are made. People, it's not. Um, if you're a non-vapor, if you're a politician, please don't automatically assume just because everyone pushes we're here to save the kids, that that is the function of it. Um, it's absolutely not. Now, the bad side is, are there some unethical companies out there? Hell yeah. Most of them, again, you go onto a vape forum, you point out someone selling to minors or mark, actually really <laughs> target marketing what it seems like to minors, or ripping off the IPs, the intellectual properties of a candy company using their actual like name brands and everything else or simulating their package looks. Yeah, <laughs> they get ripped ripped apart. As a matter of fact, let's give me a second here and uh, see if I can uh, get this switched over. Recently, and I covered this in the previous um, episode, This is, they call it poke juice. It's some dumbass Malaysia company decided, hey, let's rip off Pokemon and put it on the shelves and it'll do well. This article that came out and I'll, I'll put a link uh, down below to the article. But it was from uh, vapes.com. <clears throat> it talked about like this is not one it's not the image that the vape industry wants because it's not the function yeah adults actually do <laughs> adults are probably bigger kids in some ways um, than others because I went to our local vape shop a couple of weeks ago and it was funny because about three or four people were coming in with with their phones and they're checking out uh, the juice and the new equipment and they're always on their phone and got it got it and you check and sure enough they're playing pokemon go <laughs> and the owner of the shop when he has to take his kids somewhere he makes them play his account <laughs> of pokemon go to collect them adults do like cartoons adults do like anime they like they like a lot of the kid stuff they like the colorful as well they like the circus they like they like being able to feel like kids again. That does not mean you get a dumbass company ripping off Pokemon to market it. Now, media sees that and they go, <clears throat> oh, see, these are on the juice shelves and vape shops. Therefore, that proves that they're marketing to kids. Problem with that concept, the vape shops don't want the kids in the vape shop to begin with 
most, well, with the FDA laws and with most of the Canada laws, they aren't allowed in the shop where products are. <laughs> and so if it was being marketed to them through a vape shop, then it's kind of hard to market something when you don't even let the kids come in. So, no, it's not being, it's a dumbass marketing to adults who think, hey, Pokemon Go, it's the big crave. Yeah, I'll grab a bottle, I'll taste whatever. It's, it's really frowned on by the industry. But yeah, there are idiot companies that do that. <coughs> oh, my apologies there. As you can tell, I'm losing my voice a bit. So you'll be glad to know I'll try and keep this relatively short. Um, <clears throat> one of the big things out there is there, where does all this information come from of why it's pushed on the kids so much? You get a lot of anti-vaping groups who try and operate under a pretense of protect the kids, protect the kids. A lot of them, people don't realize, have ulterior motives. Um... For instance, here's one that's brought up so many times. It's an organization that says they're they're trying to get kids off tobacco, and if you check the staff members in all the top positions, most of them are professional lobbyists who work for the tobacco and or pharmaceutical companies. Now, they aren't exactly running clean hands. As a matter of fact, at the at the um, recent nicotine event where all the scientists get together to discuss the various issues and so forth. They even put out letters saying, oh, these are run by tobacco companies. You should not go there to learn about how things are done or real data or anything else. Stay away from it. You're hurting our kids. They actually threaten <laughs> some of them. But if you go to their website, uh, and this is... Uh, this is right from their website. They admit the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation sponsors them. They're one of the one of the grants provided. Eight million dollars to this organization. So who the hell is Robert Wood Johnson Foundation? Well, if let me move that over here for you. If you look closely, actually let me just pop it full screen here. And give it a second. There we go. The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation is built on the firm of Johnson & Johnson, who is one of the largest health manufacturers <laughs> around. So, well, if they're a pharmaceutical company or a health company, it must be a good thing, except for one problem. If you look very closely, there is... Johnson and Johnson and the product that they market is surprise nicoderm and nicotine <laughs> patch system <laughs> stop smoking cessation devices products the same products being really badly hurt by the vaping industry because again They'll tell you it's 10 to 20 percent, but it's actually three to six percent, maybe as high as eight, of success rate by these products. As most vapors can tell you, it did not work for most of us. Or if it did, it did for a little while, and then we went right back to it. So it's hard for them to compete when the vape products, and again, the media will say there's no proof of these even helping anyone stop smoking. Take a poll of vapors. It works for us. Not for everyone, but almost all of us were previously smokers. They're making the patches for it. So you have your Kid Protection Advocacy Group, funded by a wonderful organization that is dumping millions and millions into them, that is founded and owned by the same company that is making the thing that they're trying to market but because it's not nearly as successful and they're losing a lot of their market values 
and if you check on our Facebook group page, you'll see um, there are actually a lot of the UK studies recently from that have come out and shown that, yeah, uh, the success rate on the patches and so forth really aren't that great. And that's why they're recommending the e cigs because they have had such a great transition. So your kids group is going with your smoking, stop smoking cessation devices. That's a rather big conflict of interest to reference them in all the legislations as to, yes, these groups are trying to promote it. They get a lot of time on it, but they never have to disclose that, yeah, they have a very severe conflict of interest. Now, there's one person, and I'll give me a second. I'll, I'm going to pop this. I can find it over here. There. Yeah. There's. I'll, I'll put it in the link down below. Um, I'm having a bit of trouble popping it up here right now. Oh, there it is. Okay. You got. You got to check this out. And unfortunately, Brent was up all night doing the editing on this and put together for Regulator Watch another brilliant video. Um, full props to Brent. I mean, <laughs> he covers a lot of issues and brilliantly that many of us just haven't got the resources or capability or reach to do. And he brought on Stanton Glance. Now, it unfortunately, <laughs> he was up probably up so late while well, he got this on about four o'clock this morning uh so i couldn't bug him enough to get permission to run the video but uh, so I'll, I'll just do it silently in the background but he brought on stanton glance and stanton those in the vape industry already kind of understand that yeah he's quite a character and huckster very anti-tobacco and he's carried that over to the vaping, and he likes to make up a lot of his facts. He's basically a huckster. Um, and I will call him that because that's basically what he is. Granted, he did a lot to fight the tobacco early on, but it's become more of an ego. Watch the film Merchant's Doubt. You'll find out he openly admits that, yeah, his whole thing is to basically get people distracted and away from the actual facts or issues to whatever needs to be done. And so he calls it, well, I have to call it as I see it. He puts out a lot of misinformation. One of the things he says is that, well, the gateway issue. If kids vape an e-cigarette, they're going to get, it's to get all that nicotine to get them addicted so that they go on to the bigger devices. And from there, you want the bigger devices, that's going to get them smoking. And he even says that vaping doesn't help people. It might help a few people, but most of the people don't stop smoking when they vape. I've got news for you. He's <laughs> Check with vapors. There are some dual users. Most have switched over. So... He likes to toss around, oh, most still smoke. And he goes, no, the products aren't safe. He goes, yes, it would be better. He even admits it would be better if people did switch from smoking to vaping. But he says, but they shouldn't because they aren't safe. Nobody claims they're 100% safe. Royal College of Physicians, UK studies, Canadian studies, <laughs> worldwide studies, they're reports that all confirming and yet they're all separate but they're confirming that yeah it's at least 95 percent safer at least nobody says it's safe except for the ants groups the anti-vaping groups and sending glance likes using they say it's safe no we don't but as a gateway it does not it makes zero sense and no, it is not a gateway. Because the reason smokers switch to vaping is because we want to get off of cigarettes. We don't want to bother with it. 
Um, if someone's a dual user, they can at least cut down on their smoking, get rid of most of those chemicals. But he says it's a gateway, or can be, because of the studies that have come out. Uh, what those studies didn't tell fully was that, one, they never checked to see if the teens that were vaping are daily and regular users like vapors yeah we vape a lot we vape throughout the day we vape a lot they never even checked with any of the teens that wasn't to be on the question they considered if anybody had ever in their life tried to vape so but he comes up hey try this so it goes they considered that a full-time vapor somebody who tried even one single puff so they got their figures up a little bit what they also didn't say was, yeah, the smoking rate in teens has gone down dramatically. But if you look very closely, the figures of teens vaping have gone up almost the same amount. So the vape industry really doesn't like that. But in all honesty, a lot of us in our hearts are kind of glad to see the smoking, which suddenly plummeted um, when e-cigs and even the small older devices suddenly became popular or available to the market that's when those figures dropped the kids smoking rate dropped so naturally the e-cig use went up again most of them don't even use the nicotine on it they're to them it's okay this is fun and now we don't even have to worry about all the chemicals in the tobacco and you don't have that addiction factor to it and so he Glance even gets his figures kind of backwards. He says, oh, well, no, that proves because they've dropped and the e-cigarettes have gone up. That's going to lead them right back to smoking. I've used this almost every time. It's one of my favorites. My banana cream pie. As a matter of fact, as I said at the beginning, there's my banana cream pie. It just happens to be a flavor I love. So take a real banana cream pie or a banana cream pie vape and go, that tasted fantastic. It tasted so good. I have a huge craving to lick a dirty ashtray now. And that's basically what the claims of a gateway effect are trying to con or claim because you don't go from something that tastes that you might really love the taste of to going back to a cigarette when we were smokers yes we thought smoking t had flavor had taste and we enjoyed it most vapors very quickly start getting off of the tobacco flavors start going into your juices your candies your soda pop your desserts so you're not going to go from something that tastes fantastic which you didn't even realize did taste fantastic until you had stopped smoking and switched so you're not really going to go from there and say okay I don't want vaping now. I want to go. I want to start smoking again. You're not going to go from a dessert to crap. Now, some youth who, if they'll experiment with an e cig and they'll try it, or whether they use it casually or whatever, or whether they're doing their tricks, it doesn't mean they're going to go to smoking. Some might. But the ones who do, quite likely would have either way. If ASICs weren't around, they'd probably go right to smoking. Most teens, luckily now, they frown on the smoking, which is great. That most vapors will agree we're happy about. Um, I know my own daughter hated it when I smoked and used to rant on me, and I appreciated it. <laughs> it didn't help me quit until I got to the vaping, but 
I understood and I agreed and I was glad that she didn't like the smell of the smoke, the clothes, the grunge, the in the air. Vapors are glad that that's dropping, but don't blame our industry if they switch to vaping. And guess what? If they do, as much as we don't want them to, it is better than them being wiped out if vape products weren't around. If you didn't have your e-cigs, or, sorry, that's an e-cig, second generation higher are vape devices. So if you didn't have your even e-cig or a vape device around, think of what the alternative is. The smoking. The kids, if there's nothing to vape, where do you think they're going to go? They're going to go for their alcohol. They're going to go for whatever. They're going to go for smoking. They're going to end up, a lot of them, with the same health issues, problems that most of us who started when we were teens thought we'd never face. But, yeah, it builds up. And so you take away the vape devices kids are going to go smoke with the vape devices hopefully they'll never get smoking hopefully once they get away from their peer groups or as they get older they they decide yeah i don't don't feel like vape anymore then it's no problem they can just leave behind again most aren't even using nicotine most aren't daily users and so You can't blame an industry for the youth. If you get a chance, I'll put the link down below. Watch, watch the regulator watch episode. It's the first part. I'm I'm so anxious to see the second part. Standing Glance is a character. Listen to some of the BS arguments he tries presenting. He likes to throw facts and figures, how uh, the American uh, Cancer Society this and so forth. What he doesn't, well, what most people won't realize, and that's the thing, vape, pe vape industry people, a lot of them already know his antics, and we get very frustrated and angry with it, but at the same time, we chuckle. He's a huckster, and he's damn good at it, and he's comical in many ways. Fact-wise, very, very little. As a matter of fact, he's plagiarized a lot to <laughs> undo his so-called facts. But, eh, it, it is what it is. But I'll, I'll put it down below. Watch and listen to Stanton Glance on the Regulator Watch. Brent did a great job of interviewing. Left it completely unbiased. Let him go on. And it sounds very convincing until you start understanding some of the facts and the truths behind. It's easy to make up anything. And it, on Merchants of Doubt, watch the video. He's on there as well. And he explains that, yeah, his job is to misdirect, mislead people away from the facts. And he's damn good at it. Um, <laughs> the industry hates him because... He's so, it's so much BS and false info but watch it and uh, there's going to be a lot more discussion on the kids unfortunately like I said we can go on for days and days and I know I'm way over <laughs> what I'd want to do I'd want to keep it short it's going to be another hour one anyhow join our Facebook group um we're at the facebook.com slash group slash vape distortion. Please hit, click the like and subscribe for the video. Uh, they will get better. I will have more of a voice hopefully next time. Um, we have a lot more topics coming up. So hit that like, hit that subscribe button. If we can get the subscribe on the YouTube, hopefully that'll uh, get a few more people aware. Join in the chats when we go live. We'll always throw on a replay. Spread the word around. 
visit some of the pages for the advocacy groups. Go through the Facebook uh, group page. There, we don't do the advertising or anything. We just put on links and the information and clarifications on a lot of things. If you're non-vapor or a politician or whoever, feel free to join in the conversations. If you have questions, like I said, we try and sort out what's the truth and what's fiction. So, like with a Pokemon, where we call out <laughs> that Malaysian company, that juice company, <laughs> it's not all good. And we'll do our best to keep things as open and honest as possible. So if you have a question, yeah, we'll do our best to give you the pros and the cons, both sides. But don't just automatically think because you've been handed from one party or another, it's to protect the youth that they're giving you all the facts. We'll try and help out as we can, but <clears throat> you have a question about vaping? Whether it's about the youth, whether it's about the taxes, whether it's about the marketing, whether it's about target audience, whether it's about what should or should not be in regulations, because the vape industry does want some regulations and more control to get weed out the fly-by-nights, just ask, and hopefully we'll catch everyone again next time. Thanks for watching.